nerd dice. Welcome to this Stateless Code video. This is episode number 45 in our series nerddice.com where we build a tabletop role-playing management application using Ruby on Rails. And uh, we have just kind of finished a retrospective where we did a little bit of discovery about kind of the uh, what we want to do building this application, uh, did a little bit of, um, created a, a wiki for our project, talked some about user experience and usability, uh, and then I performed kind of the user experience and market research questionnaire on myself uh, in the video before our last retrospective. Uh, if we look at our project here, um, we have very little in the way of a backlog. And if we, I don't know how I get back, let me open that in a new tab so we can toggle back and forth. So we've got no open issues, no pull requests on the project, uh, and it's time to kind of get figure out what we're going to build next so we've got an application that a user can log in and uh, can sign up for an account can log in can kind of do all of those basic things that we um, got in place for user authorization via the device gem and now it's time to actually start building the features that will make this a um, roll top tabletop role-playing application as opposed to any other Rails application. What we've got so far is pretty much uh, evergreen in that it could be used as the starting point for any sort of Rails web application. So now what we want to do is start populating that backlog that we have in our project with a wish list of things we want uh, that um, to features to add to this application. Uh, and we're going to uh, just first get everything into the backlog, and then I'm gonna try to put it in priority, like absolute priority order. Like if um, dependencies didn't exist and um, the features could be completely independently of it, uh, released from one another without a thought as to the, uh, the effort or anything like that, Kind of what my absolute order of value would be and then we'll start looking at the uh, dependencies and kind of how these things might interact that would influence doing uh, one thing before another even maybe if it's absolute value uh, is less um, the other thing about a, a backlog this is going to just be um, kind of work from the top of the backlog and then uh, constantly be evaluating and reordering the different features. Uh, there might be things that we put in that um, start off as one item in the backlog and then um, get split into smaller items so that we can tackle them in kind of bite-sized chunks, ideally the length of a reasonable YouTube video, uh, as this is primarily an educational uh, project kind of going through the, the process on this. So that's kind of what we'll do. I'll also go in and we've got a couple of security alerts here for Dependabot. I'll get that into the backlog as well. Um, and that might be what we wind up tackling before we deal with the other features and stuff like that. But I'll at least get it into the backlog as its own thing. And uh, then we'll um, come back once I've got something to react to. Uh, a lot of this stuff I talked about in more detail in uh, the video where I talk about my tabletop role-playing persona. Uh, I'll link to that video in the um, description of this video so that you can uh, review that if you want more information. But this will be more kind of just taking the insights from that video, putting them as um, cards in this backlog, and then uh, trying to talk about them and talk about the them from a, a sense of uh, value in a product backlog and then uh, we'll wind up potentially even iterating on uh, in the next few videos the 
the order in which um, we can actually execute on this. So I will pause and populate the values into here and then I'll come back and we can start talking about it. All right, so I'm back. I've got, we had a backlog of four items and now we have a backlog of 50 items and I just realized I forgot to put the security um, dependabot thing. So we'll have at least 51 by the time we're done with this video. So uh, just kind of going through, uh, these are a set of things that they're not in any particular order yet. I'll kind of put them in, I'll probably stop again and put things in more kind of value order after I go through, but kind of these are a uh, kind of brainstorming level of just, hey, it would be cool if we had X without really thinking about um, all these things. And so, some of these things um, may be potentially um, duplicative or things that are um, overly broad in some cases and need to be split up. And then other cases I may have split things kind of a bit smaller, so uh, there's in some inconsistency there. But now at least we have a wish list of items. Um, and I can add to this, um, somebody can um, either the YouTube comments or uh, if we go into the, um, just the general section here, we have a, um, contributing page on the um, on here so people can try to um, provide both feature suggestions people can try to implement some of these features um, we can uh, go from there but I will um, go back to our backlog and I'll add in those um, two uh, it would probably just be one card for that dependabot thing and then I'll, I'll try to put the backlog in what I would consider absolute value order uh, and then um, talk through some of those higher priority things and then um, I'll um, start talking about some of the considerations involved there so like for example uh, I might have a really high value on uh, the ability to create and run an encounter but if I um, if I try to create a, in order to create an encounter, I need to have um, the ability to create players and create create characters, create like participants for that uh, that encounter. Uh, I could potentially just really hacky throw together um, stuff into the encounter that doesn't that like only has the actors that show up on uh, the screen uh, to, to just get things like hit points, armor class, all that stuff. But that uh, that seems like it would be a step in the wrong direction pretty far um, and, and make it harder to um, to maintain and tweak it um, and re in reality not be much better than um, what I was doing with Sublime Text, just kind of throwing the stuff into a text field or into a text editor. So um, we'll, I'll uh, pause. I will kind of order these things, um, at least in a, um, rank them. Uh, and then I'll kind of talk through these things and re-rank them. So I'll pause and do that. All right, I'm back and uh, I've done the first round of uh, putting these things in uh, what I would think to be uh, just general value order, like these are the features that I would want uh, without yet thinking about the uh, dependencies or order of execution. So I want to be able to build and run encounters. Um, I put the security alert pretty high up there. Um, the, um, the ability to create a character, uh, the ability to, and that is just something I forgot to sort down. Um, so that's ability to 
kind of assign spells based on spell lists and um, either via class, subclass, feature, etc. Um, race. Um, a, uh, a general search bar at the top of the page I think would be really helpful and um, will help to allow for um, the um, the user to, to find and navigate two things. Um, uh, the ability to create and deal with uh, NPC stat blocks, monster stat blocks, um, add connections between NPCs and characters and notes and stuff like that. Uh, the ability to create a campaign, which once we think about the order of execution, this is probably one of the first things we would um, add to there. Um, the ability to generate a character quickly um, for one shots and stuff like that. Something like a quick build where I can be like, all right, I just want a rogue and um, maybe I can um, optionally fill in a few fields to specify things. But uh, for the most part, we're, I'm thinking like create a character in 15 seconds type of deal. Um, uh, ability to associate characters with a campaign, uh, ability to level up multi-class, uh, invite friends, uh, allow proper authorization to resources is probably, once we think about the actual execution, is gonna move up in this list. Um, searching spells, um, even though I, I've got searching here, obviously it would depend on creating uh, the, the data to, to store them, uh, generating loot and experience, etc. So now I'm gonna take a, a pass at uh, trying to do some of the things. So some of these things like, um, I probably have the ability to customize my profile and have a username that isn't my email address. Uh, just in an uh, absolute sense, that isn't um, particularly um, valuable in and of itself, but in terms of execution, um, having that profile as a way to have people interact rather than trying to um, deal with um, people knowing each other's email addresses and um, even in terms of ownership and stuff like that, um, being able to um, deal with authorization, all that stuff um, is probably gonna wind up being um, top of the list in terms of things that I would actually execute on. So um, maybe not every uh, every feature in the profile um, needs to be um, polished at this point, but the, the fact that it's kind of uh, important in the, um, the, the, the grand scheme of things that like it, it's one of the core um, objects that associates a, a user with any one of these things, campaigns, characters, um, etc. cetera. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll pause and take another stab at what I think uh, generally my backlog will be, and then I'm gonna add a few items at the top of the backlog to help with the initial kind of thinking through the data. We'll create an entity diagram, at least notionally, about what I think the, how the data is going to interact with each other. Um, we'll maybe do some wireframing about how the, um, the views in the, in the app will look, um, do some more stuff like that. Um, so I will um, pause and um, kind of get things in a more execution order type of uh, relationship. And then I'll be back to finish things up. All right, so I'm back again. Uh, I've got Things. So what I had before at the top here was ability to build encounters, but I believe that there are a bunch of other things that need to take place in order to enable that. So uh, we've got here kind of um, just some basic things about some like entity diagrams and wireframes, and then um, the ability for a user to have a profile, um, which will kind of drive authorization to resources. So um, my, I can see my character, um, but somebody who I, uh, 
um, unrelated on the site can't see my character unless I make it public or whatever. Um, I can only I can update my character um, or my DM, whatever. Uh, but like uh, random user completely on the other part of the site shouldn't be able to update my character. Um, the ability to create a campaign, um, the ability to create a character, um, create and access data about monster and NPC stat blocks, uh, associate characters with the campaign, and then create individual instances of monster and NPC stat blocks. And I think by that time, we'll at least basically be able to, uh, to start working on building an encounter screen sort of thing. Um, search bar, and then um, some of these other things um, we'll get to. There are things though that are further down on this list that uh, even though they're not, uh, let me search by, uh, uh, this one here, ability to specify a tabletop role-playing system for a campaign. So uh, this may be fairly low on the list. Maybe we might wanna kind of just start with um, D&D 5th edition or whatever. Um, in, in terms of how I do this, but if that's something that's on the horizon that um, I might want to adapt this to a different uh, or allow for different uh, systems of uh, tabletop role playing in this, uh, that will affect how we design the application. We can't, um, if we do it that way, we, uh, we can't hard code everything to the first system that we uh, want to implement. Um, so um, that's a consideration like um, in terms of how we do data design and uh, that sort of thing. Um, you might get it might get into um, rails namespacing and stuff like that. We might um, decide like from the bat that uh, we want to namespace uh, D and d 5e into its own thing knowing that in the um, in the future we'll, we'll create, potentially other namespaces for other uh, systems. Um, the, that probably keeps your code, would keep your code more encapsulated to the, the particular thing and then um, um, allow for um, kind of modularity in those different systems, uh, ability to add them on. But that um, is one of those things that's, it's not really that high of a priority or value for me, but it's a kind of overall design and architecture consideration for the overall app. Uh, if you, if I think I'm gonna wind up making that in um, an option, then um, I wanna kind of at least in, uh, anticipate it out on the horizon when I build my first set of stuff. Uh, or I could say, you know what, I'm probably, uh, for the life cycle of this particular application, just going to focus on one thing. Um, even though if I do have to change it down the road, the upheaval on that would be greater uh, than if I uh, built for it from the from the start. Uh, with the, the trade off being that um, it would be more overhead to to build in such a way that it's um, adaptable to. Uh, a bunch of different systems rather than thinking about um, just one. So, um, and there are just like all other forms of programming, there are, there are trade offs. Um, the uh, one of the beauties of Rails is like if you if something's not going in the right direction, things like migrations and all these other things, the ecosystem for. Um, uh, kind of testing and uh, the culture of test-driven development, all those things, makes it easy to um, like adapt and make change. So uh, I, can, I can't guarantee a lot of things about uh, this application, but I can guarantee that we will not go all the way through these 54 items in order without uh, adding anything in or iterating 
during the course of this project. So uh, stuff's going to get uh, uh, new ideas for features are going to come kind of uh, things are going to be broken down into uh, smaller um, smaller pieces uh, things that, um, that we might try something out uh, have it not work get feedback from uh, myself or a user other than me that yeah this isn't working um, the um, things like um, I don't think I have yet other than kind of talking about it in wireframes uh, the navigation piece of this um, some menus and all that stuff hasn't really been um, noted here that will be an important part of the um, the overall uh, application other considerations like that, that will wind up kind of popping in perhaps closer to the top of the backlog than some of the stuff that I just threw on here right now. This is kind of the, even um, after iterating on the order of this a couple of times, this is still pretty much rough wish list form. Um, and it's okay to have it be here uh, at this state. So uh, one of the things that we wanna do is um, clarify any assumptions that are being made, uh, get something um, out there, develop working software, um, see uh, whether it works or not, how to improve it, and then iterate on it. Um, the, that's kind of how you get your, your best overall view of that. So something like uh, this entity diagram exercise, um, it's something that that can be helpful kind of in the early stages here, but it's also not like, I don't know everything perfectly and how it's relate, how it's going to relate and how it ought to relate. Um, so do something that um, is, is fairly uh, low effort to adapt and iterate on um, would be kind of how I would um, do this. We're following a kind of an agile process of um, kind of, do the item on the backlog and make it kind of to a definition of done where it's working and then uh, reevaluate. Um, and then if the next thing we've got is uh, ready to go, then uh, we do that. If we get feedback, we um, kind of add it into the backlog and then figure out what the priority of it is. So I'll stop there. Um, there's, um, and we'll continue um, working and iterating on this. Um, I have a couple of um, videos I kind of hinted at uh, how Rails is good at this. So I, I have a, a why stateless code series that I've done here on YouTube. And one of the things is like, um, I think I've got a couple of them, like why Rails and the, why use Rails in the 2020s. And um, one of the things about it is that Rails really is agile it makes the the trade-offs necessary like for this situation where it's one one person or a two pizza team out of a garage trying to get uh something up and running that's working um and i i think um rails uh for as long as i've been using it which is dating back to 2014 2015 or so uh has made those trade-offs better than the other kind of frameworks on the market and um, has been rewarded for, for it, I think, at, um, even though um, everything kind of shortly after went into the JavaScript, all the things uh, direction, um, the kind of the absolute fixation on application performance and scalability um, as a, um, it kind of at the expense of agility and adaptation and programmer happiness, uh, productivity, uh, that the, the, um, the performance gap, like Rails has become far more performant than it was 10 years ago. Um, whereas the, uh, if you've, if you've got a bad framework for people to work with, um, that's much harder to, to fix. Like even if it's um, super duper performant, if everybody's afraid to touch it because 
it's hard to work with uh, or you're, you're not productive like it, it's costing taking you more time as a person to get something uh, to that state of being working software than it um, um, than something else then uh, all, all those trade-offs matter so uh, I'll add those things in the um, notes page as well as my video about my tabletop persona and I'll see you in the next video Ruby on Rails 7 is out. Code along on a guided journey through the Rails 7 Getting Started Guide and beyond with test-driven development. There has never been a better time to learn Ruby on Rails. Hit the ground running with the newest version. Go to statelesscode.com slash getting started with Rails 7 to level up. Thanks for watching this Stateless Code video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. Check out our growing library of videos on our social media channels. Follow us at Stateless Code and Taxation is Theft.